Hey everybody, Vapologist here, and today I am not going to do a review of the PAX 2, but instead I'm going to completely void my warranty and break it open and see what's inside. The PAX 2 has so many claimed improvements, I wanted to get in there and see exactly how it was assembled. What's going on in here to make this such a great vaporizer? Lip sensing technology? I need to see how that works. First of all, thanks to my good friends at NewVape.com, makers of high-end titanium nails and other accessories for letting me use their machines. The old packs had a hex screw that allowed you to take the internals out, but the new model has upped the design ante a bit and getting inside is nearly impossible unless your packs. So we had to go in the hard way and we zipped the sides of the packs open cleanly so we didn't disturb anything inside one layer at a time until we made it all the way through. Once we got the outer shell off, we found out immediately why it's so hard to access. The entire internal structure is held in the aluminum tube via this really small piece that acts as the conductive charger, but also is like a lock that holds everything together. You can see the clips that hold it right here. It's really an ingenious design feature. It's got nothing to do with vapor quality, but it's a good sign that this thing is really well made. And here is the PAX 2 wide open, where you can see the battery, the PCB board, the oven chamber, and the top power button area. The PAX 2 is much smaller than the PAX 1, but it's completely missing the mouthpiece section entirely, so it's really the same height, just without that section. The mouthpiece section was trouble for PAX from day one, and they were very wise to get rid of it. Here's the magnets that hold it to the charger. And it's got a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is up 10% from the 2700 milliamp hour in the previous version. PAX is claiming 30% more battery capacity, so it remains to be seen where that is coming from, as there's only a 10% difference in milliamp hours. Here is the full printed circuit board, or PCB. And full disclosure, I don't know what anything on here is. If there's any vaporists out there who can read a PCB, please let me know. Even with my complete lack of knowledge of what's on this PCB, I can say that it definitely looks well laid out. I'm just trying to sound cooler than I am because again, I don't know what any of this stuff is or even if it's laid out properly. But I would assume PAX is not messing around and this is a very well designed circuit board. If you feel that's not the case, definitely let me know why in the comments. Here is the top button and here is where it connects to the PCB. Upon removing the air path, you can see that the oven is definitely insulated very well. It'd be nice if they insulated the air path too, because this thing can definitely get pretty warm after a couple sessions. The laser weld combining the stainless steel air path and the oven is absolutely perfect. Everything inside this vape fits super tight, but it's extremely well designed and assembled. It seems the LEDs can do absolutely any color. I found that while cycling green, it was actually showing browns, blues, and lots of other colors. So I'm assuming these are capable of absolutely every color. The LED transfer window comes out easily, revealing the LEDs on the board. I think a large portion of this board is just dealing with the LEDs. Overall, the PAX 2 is essentially the same as the PAX 1, just with a lot of very small improvements. It does have a different chamber size, it's slightly smaller, deeper, and not as wide. And there's no retractable mouthpiece section whatsoever. The battery is only 10% bigger by milliamp hours, but again, PAX is claiming 30% more capacity, so they must have figured out a more efficient way to use that power. There's definitely improved LED function, Easter eggs, hidden features, and it even plays music. I just hope that wasn't why they raised the price. I didn't see any thermostat, but it could definitely be behind the insulation against the oven. That would make sense. The flat data and power cable that leads to the oven looks way more intense than on the PAX-1. The aluminum housing is actually much thicker than on the PAX-1, a surprising improvement considering how much skinnier it is. I was really happy to see that. I was really happy to see this. Now again, I can't read this PCB board, I can't tell exactly what's on it, but I didn't see anything inside the packs that would indicate that the aluminum shell contained any sort of lip sensing technology. It's just an aluminum shell. 
Your lip touches aluminum and rubber, neither of which are connected to any electronics, so I don't know where the lip sensing technology is actually occurring. I think the lip sensing technology is going to take a little bit more investigation. There are no visible wires inside compared to the PAX-1. It's smaller due to no mouthpiece mechanism, but it's just a tighter configuration of all the parts. It's just more efficient on every level. The PAX-2 is an extremely well thought out vaporizer. It's got a very advanced heating system. The new mouthpiece and charging solutions are great. And the tolerances are incredibly tight throughout the entire design. So tight that I've got four tail lights and this PAX is never going to work again. It's a worthy upgrade if you own the PAX 1 and if you've never owned or used a PAX or a vape for that matter, you'll be extremely happy to own this vape. The only thing I wish they would have done is have added a replaceable battery, but I think that'll be on deck for the PAX 3. For more information on this or any other high-end vaporizer, head on over to vaporizersreviewed.com.